Hey, there goes one of those petticoat soldiers now. Yeah. My sister wants to join the wax. What do you think of that? <laughs> She's crazy. What the devil's a woman want to be a soldier for? Just a waste of time. This is a man's war. What sort of jobs can they do? What sort of jobs can we do? Take a look, mister. X-ray technicians, inspectors of army meat, teachers schooling our soldiers, wax or classification experts, assignment interviewers. So this is a man's war, is it? Wax are at work on every sort of army vehicle, doing every sort of motor transport job, testing walkie-talkies, testing radio tubes. Those are just a few of the jobs they do. There are 239 more. Hey, you two armchair generals on the porch, here's something more for you to think about. Listen. General Eisenhower said, in many jobs, wax do the work of two men. The Army needs and can use all it can get. And listen to the women of the United Nations. They, too, have some ideas on the subject. The English with their calm courage, the stalwart women of heroic Russia, the Canadian and Australian women, the women of China with their undying fortitude, and tens of thousands of American wax. What are their ideas on the subject? Listen. We shall live up to the legends of our fighting men. Where did these thousands come from? Where will the United States Army get thousands more? Thousands to back up manpower for battle abroad. Who are the women who will help retain the needed manpower for the production battle at home? Who are the women who will help fight our country's war? It's Mary Jones and Jane Doe. It's the idle housewife and the girl next door. Oh, yes, it's your war, too, Miss and Mrs. America. Here at Fort Oglethorpe in Georgia, one of the most beautiful army posts in the world, we, the newly hatched wax, gather to learn what all the shooting's about. Our kind of shooting. From morning till night, we hustle through a very novel, interesting life. Not just classes and drill and duty, but all kinds of women's sports and recreation. We work hard and play hard. We learn that the Army's privileges as well as its hardships are ours. We get furlough rates on trains, special prices at theaters, special life insurance rates. We know that the rumors about the wax are so much hot air. Scratch that one out. Off duty, rayon, or whatever you can get. You can't use makeup. No rouge. No lipstick. No nail polish. No rouge. No lipstick. No nail polish. No rouge. No lipstick. No nail polish. Toss that one in the ash can. Everybody's hair is alike. The same old hairdo, the same old hairdo, the same Nonsense. Old Our hairdress is up to us, as long as it's neat, smart, and off the collar. All work and no fun. All work and no fun. Strictly Axis propaganda. From WAC training centers at Fort Oglethorpe and at Des Moines, WACs go forth to army posts, camps, specialist schools, air bases, to every part of the United States, Savannah, St. Louis, Newport, Baton Rouge, Seattle, Santa Barbara. To Washington, our nation's capital, come hundreds of WACs, many to be stationed in the famous Pentagon building and attached to the combined chiefs of staff. Wax are entrusted with tasks involving the utmost secrecy. Here, the important work of decoding messages whose information must be carefully guarded and transcribed with perfect accuracy. At Aberdeen Proving Ground, valuable men have been released for combat duty by Wax. Inspecting mammoth tanks, computing ordnance firing tables for the light, accurate American carbines. The carbines that have canceled the effectiveness of many a Nazi and many a Jap.
Here, they also check the efficiency of remote control units and make secret ballistic measurements. These are just a few of the important and interesting jobs done by wax. At air bases here and overseas, women soldiers perform over 25 technical jobs. War jobs now, but civilian careers later on. We are in the machine shop, in the repair shop. We rig the parachute. We guide our flyers home. Altitude 5,000 feet, 5000. Zero, zero, zero. Request landing instructions. Mitchell Field Tower to Army 3131. Circle Field twice at 3,000 feet. Let me in, will you? I've got a heavy date tonight. Hmm. Keep your shoot on, Lieutenant. Field won't be clear for five minutes. Potential American pilots are taught blind flying by our wax. They are taught to handle night raids over Europe and the Black Pacific. Taught to navigate safely through black space, loaded with hidden peril. Thousands of wax volunteer for overseas duty, eager to serve in the actual theater of operation the goal toward which they've worked and trained. Wherever the American armies will go, wax may follow. Women have proven their definite value in England, in North Africa, in Algiers, in New Caledonia, India, and Egypt. Every whack making the war shorter by a month, a week, a day, a minute. Yes, wherever the American armies will go, wax may follow. To Berlin and Tokyo, too. Ladies and gentlemen, General Marshall. The Women's Army Corps is an integral part of the Army of the United States. And its members, who are soldiers in every sense of the word, perform a full military part in this war. There are hundreds of important Army jobs which women can perform as effectively as men. In fact, we find that they can do some of these jobs much better than the men. As more and more American soldiers engage the enemy in combat, women must replace them at overseas bases and at posts in this country. In view of the urgency of the situation, enlistment in the military service should take precedence, in my opinion, over any other responsibility except imperative family obligation. In 1918, we were on the sidelines. The war has been won. The women in the army will march shoulder to shoulder with the men in the great victory parades. It will celebrate the return of peace to the world. 